That's life. That's life. That's what all the people say. Alright guys, it is Wednesday morning. I haven't been recording earlier this week because I was sick. Finally going to the office today. We do have one presentation on the financials and underwriting of a South Carolina deal. That was actually the lead from YouTube. Aside from that, we do have a best and final counter offer for the off-market Georgia deal. So hopefully we can get that done. And then the off-market Ohio deal. Sellers on that, they decided against selling. They said their accountant advised them not to. And um, I think it's just the wife didn't want to sell. But the buyers, they're gonna be up at their park that's in town next week. So we're gonna try and set up an in-person meeting and hopefully get that done. Now off topic, there is one very old Goldsboro, North Carolina deal that we are about to have under contract. I was working on that six plus months ago. Seller wanted a ridiculous price. We did end up finding a couple guys that we've dealt with before who are good buyers. They did end up coming to an agreement with them. So we do have that back on the table. Enon kind of tied that one back up in the background, but that should catch you guys up to speed. I am going to have a busy day at the office because I have not been working. I was way too sick, literally sick in bed sleeping. So as soon as I get to the office, I'm gonna be back to uh, hammering the phones. I have not. Why not? not yet. I gotta get them hung up. I don't really like the layout and I still don't like that one. Yeah. After these next couple deals close that I have, I'm gonna make this office look lit. Make it look like a... Uh, kind of fucking neon signs and shit. Yeah. Little de- I think I might get a new desk. I don't like this desk. I don't like the desk either. Ugly. So here's the thing, dude. All these legs are all broken. Like this, dude, like it's actually like broken off. Like, this is barely holding itself up. Hey, Todd, good morning. How you doing, sir? Good, good. Okay, my name's Chris with Other Street Advisors. There's a mobile home park in town, Frontier Village. Yeah, I've heard it's for sale and all that, and I'm really not interested in it right now. Okay. All right, yeah, I mean, you're, you're, the, you're the prime target. You're right there in town. I know it. <laughs> Yeah, we already own two businesses, man. I'm freaking thin as I want to be. I'll be honest with you. I appreciate you. Fair enough. I appreciate your time. Keep it up, buddy. Uh, what he didn't do is he didn't link it to the property, so it didn't help us at all with what he did before. So again, we, we got to target local people because it's a local town. I would be calling all of these other local business people, like these hotels, but you got to find, you don't know how to research yet, so that's the only problem. All of these little businesses, like everyone here is going to be a super local rural guy. So I would call all the big business owners in town. So I would literally be calling all these storage places. So now we are about to do a presentation call on the South Carolina deal that I was mentioning earlier. These are actually the guys that reach out to me from YouTube. They're looking to sell their park. They ha- do have a few offers, I think, from local people. They want to see what our underwriting puts the park and what number we come up with. Here we just put together a little um, presentation package on the deal. Um, Jim, if you want to take control and go through the underwriting. Volume-wise, over $2 billion uh, northeast. I mean... We've done, you know, over 50-something billing in, you know, the southeast. First thing is that your park's in a good location. Um, we know it's a super hot market. Me and, uh, you know, we regularly fly out there because we do a lot of deals between North Carolina. The biggest challenge to your park really is just the size and the fact that it's half park on homes. Mainly with the park on homes, it's it's hard to get debt on that because a lot of banks don't want to finance the income portion from the park on homes and are only looking at the land portion. No cure. I mean, you're running a very good expense ratio even with that number of park on homes. I'll get this in a PDF and I'll shoot it over to your email, Vincent. And then um, what's uh-huh. a good what's a good timeline for me to follow up with you? I love Starbucks. But anyways, on this fine morning, we are calling the seller on the off-market Georgia deal. We do have a best and final offer from Open Door Capital, so hopefully we will get that deal done. We're really close. A little slight discrepancy on the term still, but they did provide a table with their offer showing the difference in payment, and I mean, it is such a small difference that I think we will get this deal done. Hey, Armand, I got uh, Enon on the other line. You mind if I patch him in? Hey, so I got your conversation with them about the adjustment if i were to just give you my like kind of direct and honest response and, and that's what i do if someone were to go to a bank and you were holding financing on this deal your property is probably worth three two and that's the reality the, the fact that you're holding paper and it's under terms that are you know are kind of acceptable to where they're underwriting and giving you the premium on the price i think they gave you their best offer and you just got to make a business decision you know what i can tell you is is we showed this to probably 10 groups and nine were a pass. There's no doubt in my mind you're getting a half million dollar premium, if not more, by holding paper, and that's good for you. But at the same time, terms for them got to work over the long haul for their numbers to work, and, and I think any adjustment's probably going to make their numbers, which are already tight, not work. That, that's my assumption here. Hey, man, have a great day and a good weekend. I'll talk to you next week. Okay. Bye-bye. 
Dummy. Okay, so this right here is a confidentiality agreement to a over 100 space mobile home and RV park in North Carolina that I should be getting financials on this week. Some owners do want a confidentiality agreement signed just to get their info. Hopefully, we'll get this deal. I think they're a little overpriced on what they want for it. But again, until we see the rent roll and everything, we don't know. So I'm going to shoot this over and then should be getting a rent roll and a P&L from them by Monday. And then later today, we also have a call to the buyers of Whitewater Estates. One situation we're running into and is COVID related and the way things are going with banking. Before getting the loan on the property, they need to get the park appraised. The appraisal apparently is five weeks behind. So they want to extend it obviously as long as that appraisal is going to take. What they want to shoot for is for them to make the money go hard, their deposit go hard right now, because if they're going to extend it that long, we don't want anything to go wrong in the meantime and everything else is checked out on the property so far with due diligence and they're supposed to close as soon as this appraisal comes through. We have that call today at 3 p.m. and I should have an update for you guys then. Virgil Nether, ne ne Virgil Nethercott. Exactly, he's the, the Wyoming guy. He roams the Pacific Northwest. So I have not had a conversation with the seller on Whitewater yet. I wanted to talk to you first. I think the one thing the seller is going to want to feel confident from me is that, you know, you guys are moving forward and, you know, I know that you're waiting on the appraisal, but I think he's going to want me to ask if the money can go hard. Yeah, well, we already did, man. Oh, my bad, dude. I'm, I'm you know, dude, I'm, 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 I'm in. Money's, money's hard. You're, uh, no, you're good, dude. I, you know, regional banks work. They're, they're small and they don't, they sometimes just work at a, a their different pace, but we, we already have our operating account funded and everything. We're just waiting. I mean, the appraisal is, which is basically the last thing. Everything else is lined up. I, my partner, we're, we're chopping up a bit, man. Uh, it's just frustrating that this third party report is the, basically the last thing. It'll close as soon as it's, uh, the appraisal comes in good. Yeah, I just need to call the owner, man. I haven't done that yet. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. The weird thing is, is everything's getting pushed right now. So it's just, it's just weird. We're in a wonky environment. I mean, we have we have a few deals that's supposed to close at the end of the month and the attorneys are so busy, they're asking to push. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I think we'll have like 11 closings in July, June. <laughs> so, that's going to be a good month, man. You should take the rest of your off. No, no, I, I want the money now. <laughs> like, I don't, meaning that, you know, freaking time kills deals is the way I view it. So. No, you're Dude, I don't know what it is, man. I feel like uh, the baby boomers, mama pops are ready to get out. Okay, sounds okay. good, man. You have a great weekend. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Christian, any thoughts? On the way. Anything? Uh, the only thing they're waiting on is the appraisal, and they're three weeks out because everything's so backed up. They've already got loan commitment approval. They've already started their operating account. They're ready to go. It's just that's the last thing for the bank to cross the T's and dot the I's. I don't think you have anything to worry about. Their money is hard. They're moving forward, but. They did ask to move that closing date to, to June 24th or before, just based upon when they get that appraisal. I, I don't think there's, I think there's zero concern to be concerned about. I, well, I'd say 1% just to be safe. If they can't get financing, then they can still get their money back. Well, I think, is the, I think the financing contingency's passed, right? I think so. Yeah, hold on. Let me pull this up real quick. Hold on. They didn't have a financing contingency in the contract. Okay, cool. So when it's after the transfer, force is going to be hard as... All right, stand by. We'll get that addendum out, and um, I'll talk to you later. So they're both so easy you know, going. You addendum? Yeah. Okay, will you do that? So what do I need to say in respect to the money? Is there any specific wording? You're going to look at the deposit, and what you're going to do is you're going to reference, you know, the deposit amount in section is now considered non-refundable at this point, except for seller default. Okay. Yeah. And then on the closing date, you know, section 12, referencing the closing date, the closing now date shall, to shall hereby be extended. Okay, I'll send it to you before I send it. Okay, thanks. Alright guys, so it's Friday afternoon and I am on Baldwin Park just having a cigar with my friend Tristan. Um, was sick all week so barely got to record anything. Pretty much to give you guys an update, we do have a best and final offer on the off-market Georgia deal. Aside from that, Lighthouse Oaks from last week with the, the money has went hard and that deal is moving forward. Other than that, everything is uh, tugging along forward. Countryside Estates is still moving on track. So. We do have most of the closings set for either the last week of May or most of them in the first couple of weeks of June. And I'm also be moving up to New York City in that same time frame. So see you guys next week. Don't forget private Facebook group in the description below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Fly me to the moon. Let me play among the stars.